I was at chemo alone again, just sitting there with the needle in my arm and a red IV bag dripping into it. Not a lot of people knew I was sick. I'd just stare into space, trying to concentrate on not hearing the other patients vomiting so I wouldn't. I was getting really sick of the smell of the hospital. I looked around the room and there were a lot of friends and family of other patients around, reminiscing about good times. How are you doing, she said. She was wearing a red vest. Every time I went in, she was there. But I never really thought she cared. I thought she was just there for volunteer hours and for experience. But she kept coming back. We talked, just simple conversations. She didn't need to be there, but she was. Even my close friends didn't know I had cancer. One of them called one day when the chemo was just starting. Her mother had fallen into a diabetic coma. I imagined her in the hospital alone, so I went. We were alone, together. When I finished chemo, I could have done a million things. Go on vacation, learn how to play the guitar, but instead I started volunteering at the Canadian Diabetes Association. My hair hadn't even grown back yet. Not a lot of people think diabetes is a serious illness, but it's just as bad as cancer. I helped four program coordinators with recruiting volunteers and setting up events around the GTA to help educate high-risk ethnic groups about the disease and help them manage it. After I'm done working, I'll stick around sometimes and talk with people and listen, just like that woman did with me. Now I'm the volunteer, and I see a lot of myself in them.